Hey everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So today we're going to be recreating the currency converter using Swift UI. If you haven't seen my previous video, I'll be sure to drop a link to that in the video description and you can go ahead and watch it where we created our currency converter using UI kit. But today we're going to be focusing on Swift UI. So first things first, um, I have an empty project here and I just created two new files. Uh, one of them is called a currency data and the other one's called Network Manager. I've written no code as of yet, but let's go ahead and take a look at the API that we're going to be working with. Okay, so this is the API we're going to be working with. I'll be sure to drop the link to this in the video description as well. It's an Exchange Rate API, and if we go ahead and view this in our JSON viewer here, we'll look at exactly what we want here is the currency code and then the buy-in prices. Unlike our Bitcoin tracker, this has no currency symbols. So all we have to do is focus on just a currency code, which is of type string, and then our buying price, which is going to be double. So let's go ahead and go back to our project here, and we'll enter our currency data. And from here is actually very simple. We just go ahead and create a struct, uh, currency data, make it conform to codable, and then let the rates of type and array and dictionary a string and a double so that's out of the way it's completely done with that so let's go and move over to our network manager here okay so first things first here in the network manager we need to get rid of import foundation and import swift ui and the reason is because when we create a class called network manager we have to make it conform to observable object. And we're going to create two properties. It's going to be at published var currency code. And it's going to be an array of strings. And at published var exchange price. And this one's going to be an array of doubles. So now we have to create our method to actually fetch all the data. So we do fetch func fetch currency data. And then we'll do our completion, uh, escaping uh, result currency data. And then our error here. And then this should return nothing. And then we have to safely unwrap our API key. So we'll do guard let URL equals URL string. And then we'll paste in that API key that's in the video description. Okay, so go ahead and paste that in there. Else we return. And then we'll do our URL session dot shared dot data task. And we want the one with the completion handler. And with the URL request is going to be the URL that we created right over here. So go ahead and put that in. And then over here, just hit enter. And then we'll put data, response, and then error. And then if let error is error, we'll do completion dot failure error. So there is an error. We'll go ahead and print it out and then we return out. And then we we'll have to make sure we safely unwrap the data because it isn't optional. So go ahead, go ahead and do guard let save data equals data else return. And then we have to do the rest of this and they do catch block. So we'll do let currency equals try JSON decoder dot decode from our currency data dot self. And make sure here is our safe data, the one that we safely unwrapped. And then our completion will be dot success. And then we'll go ahead and put our currency in here and our catch. So if there are any errors, our completion will be dot failure. And then we'll get that error. And then very important, don't forget this. We have to go dot resume here. And then last but not least, we need our initializer. So we'll do init and we'll do 
fetch currency data and then right again here on the completion handler we'll just go ahead and put in enter and then we'll put a currency and and we'll create a switch statement for this so switch on currency the one right over here and then in our case i have it with success to let prices and then we'll do dispatch queue because remember this has to be done on the main thread this patch queue.main.async, we'll do self.currencycode.append, make sure it's the content of prices.rates.keys, and then just do this uh, process one more time for the exchange price. Append contents of prices.rates, but instead of keys, we do dot values. And then afterwards, we just have to add in the case for if there is a failure on this, so we we'll do case dot dot failure. So we'll do let error, and then we'll go ahead and print out the error. So let's just say fail to fetch currency data, and then we'll get that error. And now our switch statement is exhaustive at this point. So we already did the network call. Now we do have access to all the all the uh, currency codes as well as the exchange prices. So all that's left to do is go ahead and get our pick review going so we can actually display that to the user. Okay, so up here, we're going to want to create three properties. The first one's gonna be observed object. Yes, make sure you do observed object and not observable object like we did in our previous file. So you'll do observed object var network manager set to network manager and then we'll create two more properties so this one's going to be at state private var amount string and set that to empty string this is going to be the amount the user enters into the text field that we're going to create in a little bit so and then we'll do one more state private var picker selection equals zero so in our body here, we'll go ahead and get rid of this uh, text. We're not going to need this right now. We'll, we'll go ahead and start creating the UI. So we're going to put all this to a V stack. And then we'll go ahead and create a spacer here. Our text is just going to be using nil coalescing. So it's going to be total and then specifier. And then we're going to round that to two decimal places. Now, don't worry, we're gonna create this total in just a second. And then the dot font is going to be dot system, size 30. You can play around with the size if you want. Just 30 seems to be a good, uh, a good fit for this. And then our text field. And then we're gonna ask them, ask the user to enter the amount and then the text here is going to be dollar sign amount. And then we'll just go ahead and do some like minor modifiers just to make the text field look nicer. So we'll do rounded border text field style. Uh, keyboard type, we'll go ahead and switch that to decimal pass since the user only has to enter numbers. And then we'll go ahead and add some padding here into it. So let's go ahead and create our total property. So we'll do var total double because we're going to return a double. And we'll do guard network manager dot exchange price dot count. And we have to make sure it's over zero so we don't get any uh, index out of range errors. Otherwise, we'll just return zero. And we'll do let buying price is set to network manager dot exchange price and using our picker selection. And then let double the amount. And the reason we're calling that is because we're gonna cast this as a double the amount, because remember, it's a string here, but we need the amount. So we can actually do all our necessary uh, multiplication and return the double that we need. So let total amount at this point equal the buying price multiplied by the double amount. And then we just return the total amount. So that satisfies that. 
And then we just go ahead and finish off with our pick review at this point. So let's go ahead here and do a uh, picker. Uh, no label. And then our selection is going to be our picker selection. And then we're going to do a for each. So we do for each two periods network manager dot currency code dot count. So we want all the currency codes in there. And then afterwards we'll do let currency equal network manager dot currency code dollar sign zero. And then our text will be the actual currency. And then from here we can add some some padding actually to this whole thing just to make it look nicer. Uh, we'll add the ID here, our UUID. And then as well as labels is hidden. Just in case for whatever reason this label doesn't want to comply with us. So now that we have that, we should actually have our entire project completed. So we have the entire list of currency showing up here from our JSON data from our API. Let's go ahead and try entering an amount. Our keyboard isn't showing up for some reason, but if we go ahead and type it in, you can see that it does change and it's changing dynamically as you select a different currency. And then if we were to go ahead and switch this currency out, so we're at 23, we go ahead and put uh, just two. You can see that no matter what number I type in, it'll keep changing even if it's a really large number. But anyways, that does it for today's tutorial. Um, if you go, if you enjoyed today's video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and subscribe for future content and leave a comment down below for any uh, future tutorials you would like to see.